Welcome to Chief Architect X16. In this What's New video, we'll show you some of the great new features we've added to the new version. So, let's get started and see our new software. In this Chief Architect X16 What's New video segment, I'm going to show off our new productivity features. Let's begin by looking at the new Action History Undo List. The Action History List is a quick way to undo several actions without clicking Undo for each event individually. In this example plan, you can access the Action History from the View menu. This will dock the events from your History Action. If I click on the first action above Open Plan, all the events up to this point will be undone. You can click at any point in the Action History to undo the chain of events and you can arrow through the events for the undo. The action history will work in any of your views and should help save you time. Automatic numbering has been added for construction lines. In the construction line defaults is a new option to include automatic ordering and the rules for these lines. There are three sets of system rules which you can define the automatic callout symbol to use. The rules can be created with control for how to apply the rule. When the callouts are set to automatic, the numbering will be generated as you create construction lines. When you insert or reorder the lines, the automatic numbering updates. Any automatic line can be converted to a manually generated callout number and vice versa. When using the Reflect About tool, it now works on angled centers such as copying a window or cabinet and reflecting it to the adjacent wall. The Reflect About tool locates the corners of walls, CAD, and other objects, as you can see with the feedback line. Elevation views have object snaps for wall ends, casing, frames, and sills for openings. These same snaps have been implemented in floor plan views. A Delete Dimension tool is available to delete all dimensions in an active view, plan, elevation, or 3D. This tool can be added to your toolbars if you frequently use it. From the Active Layer Display options, there is a Find tool for locating objects on that layer. The program will search plan views, CAD details, and your default settings. You will see a list of these options when the item is in multiple locations. To manage and condense your plan line styles, there's a new option to merge line styles to assist with plan management. A concentric resize tool is available in the lower edit toolbar. When a polyline based object is selected, you can use this tool, set a jump amount, and then concentrically edit the item. Two D and three D molding polylines have been combined into a single molding polyline object. There is no more distinction if you drew a polyline in an elevation or a plan view. Now, when you convert any polyline into a molding, it will be three D and called a molding polyline. On the general panel are new options to miter the molding at twisted joints and miter molding if next edge is turned off. And there is a new fill style panel for molding polylines that can help with color coding if you are using the tool for things like a plumbing diagram. Symbols also have the same new fill style panel providing the ability to control how these items appear in your plan views. The previous version fill controls were relocated from the 2D block panel for consistency. Converting from one polyline-based object to another can now be done in one step. For example, you can convert this molding polyline into a 3D solid or any of several other objects, of which are new terrain, curbs, and walls. When converting an object, you can retain the original polyline. Text can be converted into notes using a new edit tool. The tool works for both text and rich text, transforming them into notes. 
For 3D views, you can quickly toggle on, off hand-drawn lines on your renderings using a hotkey or the shortcut tool that you can place on your toolbar. And there is a reset option for 3D views that have been modified to the position or all settings for the camera, like the line drawing, to restore your view to its original state. Any view you have on your screen, Plan, Elevation, 3D, can be copied to the clipboard using a hotkey or the shortcut tool that you can place on your toolbar. Once the screen is captured, it can be pasted into other applications. Chief Architect has a lot of tools, and keeping track or finding where these tools are located can be a challenge, especially for new users. To help with the process, we created a tool search bar that can be added to your toolbar. Once on your toolbar, search Sun. I'll select the Move Sun tool, and I'm in a mode to move the sun. Now search Clay, and I'll choose to change the rendering technique to Clay. Finally, search Reset, and I'll reset the camera back to its original state. It's a time-saving tool. Try it out. There have been a number of new features and improvements made to framing and building construction in Chief Architect X16. Let's begin with framing. The Build Framing dialog has been simplified by moving the framing defaults to a separate view. To change any of the framing defaults, open that view and you will find all the familiar defaults by category. In the Streamlined Framing dialog are two framing options. The automatic rebuild will continuously update the framing and build once framing can be manually run. For each of these sections, you can choose to build by a specific category or for all the categories. For build once framing, you can select which floors to build for both the floor and ceiling category. Ceiling framing is now its own category that is now separated from roof framing. It can be created for automatic ceilings and for custom ceilings like vaults and trays. And in the Delete Objects tool, you will find a new option to delete framing for custom ceilings. Framing for openings now has an option for flat headers, like for interior doors when a full header may not be required for non-bearing walls. You will find this framing method on the framing panel for both doors and windows. Flat headers will be rotated to match the depth of the wall framing. The flat header board is different than the top sill since it's built above the opening trimmer. Flat headers can be built at the top of the wall or at the top of the opening and can be combined for openings that are close. In the Wall Specification dialog on the Structure panel is an option to switch which side the wall details view the framing, either the interior or exterior side. In a Wall Detail view, you can quickly rebuild the wall's framing by selecting any framing member and using the Rebuild Framing tool in the lower Edit menu. Notice when the framing is rebuilt, the label updates to be viewed from the inside. For roof truss framing, a direction line is available to control the automatic orientation direction for trusses. As I rotate the direction line, the trusses also rotate for precise control for truss framing. Also available is a roof girder truss line. It will split the roof system into unique parts, allowing the framing to have two directions. This line can be defined for the number of girder trusses along with other truss information. There is added control for deck posts and beams. For beams, you can specify the count. They can be positioned to be in line with the joists or placed under the joists. A new offset allows you to precisely position the beam, including making it flush with the deck's edge. For the deck support posts, they can be aligned with the beam center, 
exterior or interior edge. When the deck is automatically framed, it now includes the blocking for border planks. For deck and interior railing walls, newel placing can be defined from start, end, centered, between ends, manually, or automatically spaced. Newels can be repositioned within the railing using a new move tool found in the edit toolbar or by clicking on the newel and pressing the tab key. Additional newels can also be added. To dimension newels, there is a setting for both centers and sides. These dimensions can locate and be used to precisely position the newel posts. If you have customized stairs and ramps and want to reuse them on future projects, you can add them to the library. From the library, click and drag to create a new variation of that stair style. Corner shelves have been enabled in X16. Similar to placing a corner cabinet, hover with the shelf tool in a corner to create a corner wrapping shelf that can easily be changed from an angled front to an L shape. For cabinet doors and drawers, you can define the panel's thickness. You will find this setting on the Door Drawer section in the Cabinet dialog. Space planning has been updated to improve bubble diagramming for design layout. Room boxes have polyline editing, allowing you to add breaks and change the room's shape. These boxes include walls on the outside, and when bumped together, change the dividing wall to a 4-inch wall. Room box snapping was updated so that the boxes snap more easily. When room boxes overlap, it will cut out the other box. And finally, room boxes now show when using reference floor display. As in this example, you can see the room boxes from the floor above. Electrical connections can now be placed on non-electrical objects, such as this text box. There are electrical connection defaults to set up the spline's segment angle and curvature arc for electrical circuits. On the line style panel, you can define the line options and drawing group, and then there's an added label panel. Label panels have also been added to several other object dialogs. The Layer Painter tool has all the management tools for Add, Copy, Delete, and Set as a default layer directly within this dialog. Previously, these had to be accessed externally to the tool. There have been several enhancements and new features to improve 3D views in Chief Architect X16. Let's begin with ray tracing for Max. The big news with X16 is that we have implemented physically-based ray tracing on Mac computers. Mac computers that support the system requirements now have the same GPU ray tracing as PCs. You can refer to our computer systems blog article with comparable metrics of PC and Mac GPU ray tracing to learn more. If you are a Mac user, PBR ray tracing is now available. In X16 PBR ray tracing, we have exposed path tracing settings that simulate light transport throughout a scene using physically based principles. A control for opaque bounces defines the number of times light bounces off opaque materials. A setting of one bounce consists of no more than two hits to the material. The control for transmissive and specular defines the number of bounces for translucent, transparent, and mirror material surfaces before terminating the light's path. Ideally, each path would continue until the remaining light contribution is negligible or it exits the scene. However, this can be computationally intensive, so we have exposed the bounce controls to help you optimize the best rendering results. Settings of 1 opaque bounce and 4 specular bounces would be similar to X15's behavior when approximate additional bounces is checked. 
Emissive materials produce light in GPU ray trace views. These are known as area lights. Any material that is set to be emissive, fireplaces, TV screens, light bulb glass, and vertical rope lights will contribute light based on the emissive value. The quality of physically based ray trace views can be significantly improved with area lights. In addition, a single lighting model can be used for both a standard render and a PBR render. Why? These standard renders use punctual lighting sources, which can be tuned for these views and not set overly bright. The PBR model uses the emissive area lights for its lighting model. The emissivity of the lights are derived from the light's color and brightness by default. You can override the default and use emissive materials with custom values to tune your lighting model. This was done for these LED hoop lights. Now you can edit in a standard view that looks good with faster response times and then switch over to a PBR view for final editing or creating realistic renderings for your clients. High dynamic range images are now supported for backdrops. HDR backdrops are spherical and contribute environment lighting effects to both 3D scenes and material previews. Since HDR images are able to more accurately store the differences in brightness between objects over LDR images, it can greatly enhance indirect lighting for render scenes. There are new HDR backdrops in the bonus library or you can import your own. An HDR image can be used for a backdrop in any rendering technique, but it will only be an HDR for GPU ray trace views. In other render techniques, the HDR image will be tone mapped and converted into an LDR image before being displayed in the view as a backdrop. In ray trace 3D scenes, select an HDR backdrop and then it will automatically mark the spherical backdrop option. In the camera settings is the option to only use the backdrop for lighting. In the render scene, the backdrop can be rotated side to side with the rotate tool under the camera view options. HDR images can add significantly to the quality of your render scenes, in particular for exterior renderings. Chief renderings can be exported as an HDR image. I'll export this scene as a 360 panoramic image, choosing to make it a backdrop with an HDR file type. HDR images can be used to preview materials using a new dropdown for the backdrop type. Using your model to preview materials can assist to show lighting used from your scene. To de-emphasize the backdrop, you can use the blur setting in your appearance preference so you can focus on seeing the material using your model's lighting. Light can pass through translucent materials such as curtains, glass, and other materials in physically based ray trace views. New properties have been added to the translucent material class. The thin setting treats the front and back surface as one, ideal for fabrics and foliage. There are transmission settings for color maps, roughness, and roughness maps that can adjust the way light is transmitted through the materials, in particular for plants. You will also find enhanced material maps for normal, ambient occlusion, metal, and new maps for translucent and clear coat. The new clear coat material property can be used to create a glossy or built up sheen in 3D views using PBR ray trace. Adding a clear coat property to materials will result in a more accurate modeling of the materials, like car paint or anything with a layer of polish. You can specify roughness values and attach roughness or normal maps separately for the clear layer. Tone mapping is the process of taking high dynamic rendering lighting values produced during rendering and mapping them to the range for display on the screen. Chief Architect has supported a process known as HABLE since it introduced physically based rendering. 
In X16, we have implemented an additional Academy Color Encoding System tone mapping process that tends to produce more saturated colors and darker darks than Habel. These two-tone mapping approaches can produce different results that may vary depending on your scene. They can be found in the PBR and clay rendering technique cameras. For watercolor renders, you can change the base rendering technique from standard to physically based or clay to achieve different rendering styles. The cross-section slider tool that has worked with most of the rendering techniques has been enabled to work in both orthographic and vector views. Dimensions can now be created in 3D views. Automatic dimensions for interior, exterior, and story pull work similar to the way they work in plan views and elevations. With manual dimensions, you can click to establish the dimension plane and then click and drag to create the dimension. There are dimension tools in the Edit Toolbar for setting an object in component mode and to adjust the offset distance. Editing the dimension is similar to the other views with the added ability to position the dimension in 3D space. You can click on Object and Create Dimensions with a new dimension tool in the Edit Toolbar. In the Camera Specification is a new setting for dimension defaults. On the General Panel in the 3D Display section, you can configure the extensions and labels. Using 3D Dimensions, you can now create renderings with a defined sense of space for your clients. There are several efficiency improvements to our drafting and project management tools. Schedules have received several new updates, as well as reference display. Let's begin by looking at the new Poche Fill tool. A Poche Fill has been added for walls and platforms. This includes wall tops and plan views, and in other views, walls, floors, ceilings, and roofs. You will find this option for plan views, elevation, and 3D views. The poche can be found under the Edit Active View tool. When enabled, you can choose the fill color. The poche fill also works in the 3D cross-section slider. As you adjust the slider, the fill will update to the cutting plane. With the new tool, you can get a crisp look in all your views. CAD details can be copied between plans, making it easy to transfer details from one project to another. Right-click on the detail through the project browser to copy and then paste it through the project browser in a different plan. Individual components that make up a wall assembly can be assigned to specific layers for control in 2D, 3D, and material list views. For a remodeling project, this basement foundation wall has new interior components assigned to specific layers. In the floor plan view, those layers can be turned off. In a 3D view, you can do the same by turning off the drywall layer to expose the new framing. For this 3D view, I created a layer set to turn off the exterior wall layers to expose the house wrap and then the sheathing. Also, a layer set to expose only the new framing. In a materials list, a layer set can be created to filter only the new framing to isolate the needed remodel framing as you can see these components in the display column. While this is a more advanced feature, it can be very helpful for remodeling or a way to create detailed views. Schedules can include objects from multiple rooms by multi-selecting rooms and then creating a schedule. For this example, I'll create a fixture schedule. In the Schedule dialog, you can adjust which rooms to use for the schedule. New for schedules is the ability to include ceiling planes and 3D solids. In this example, fixtures are included from the grouping of rooms that make up the bathroom suite, including the two benches that are 3D solids. For applicable columns, you can include a calculated total and sum similar row items. 
custom columns and fields can also calculate totals. On the Attributes panel of the schedule is a new vertical row alignment to format schedule rows as justified at the top, center, or bottom. If you have customized schedules, like for windows, cabinets, or fixtures, they can be saved to the library to share with others or for reuse on future projects. Any schedule in the library can be edited in the library, making it easy to transport schedules between plans or users. To locate a schedule for an object, there is an Edit tool to Find Schedule. When the object is in more than one schedule, the program will show you the list of those schedules. Rooms now have an Object Information panel for managing custom data. Room schedules can have all of the object information specific columns – code, comments, description, manufacturer, supplier, or custom columns. Leader lines can be created for dimensions that don't fit between extension lines. On the General panel for dimensions, you can choose the leader line style of square corner, curved, or straight. Straight leaders can include a second segment. Dimension leaders can include arrows. If you manually move the dimension number, the leader line will follow. Once a dimension string is created, it can be edited by unchecking the default leader and you can create a different style. Dimension leaders can also be added to the other segments. There are many great new features in Chief Architect X16, and you can expect to see it in late Q2 of 2024. And remember, all new software subscriptions include support and software assurance that provides access to all of our latest software. So, if you are not currently a customer, get started today with Chief Architect.